Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of Knights of Evening Star. With me, your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes. Um, very tired, sleepy boy, so forgive me if I don't have the usual chaos energy, but I am joined by uh, the ever-lovely, who are going to bring all the chaos energy. You can get it all from them, not from me. Uh, we have wild man jonathan indovino aka <laughs> shady penguin uh, um crazy crazy cat anna prosser we've got we've got uh i i can't i, I literally can't think of anything else <laughs> i ran out of ideas electric. we got nate sharp electric nate sharp uh zany. and then zany mika oh zamika sorry anna, anna did you do i'm one? just throwing out energy words <laughs> powerful um, powerful i'll take yeah, it i'll it. take it i'll take those words for sure uh hello dear friends how are Whoa. we all so good. good well good so good wow we got, wow we got proper english look at mm -hmm. i love the kind of like distinct uh vibes that we have as well with like anna and mika have got like bright like colors looking very ethereal you know like like uh galadriel kind of just glowing with radiance and then me me shady and nate are like nah, 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 nah. <laughs> i don't know what with... you're talking about i'm i'm joining in on the bright oh background God, today. Bright, bright light i love it mm -hmm. um very very apt but yeah welcome friends uh we're gonna be playing through some Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, if you don't know what Evening Star is, there's a lot of episodes to go back and check, but we are basically uh, playing as a bunch of nobles and their advisors who are managing a kingdom in the in uh, the region of Cormir, which is part of the Forgotten Realms. Um, and I do have a little recap for you, but is there any, anything, anything, anybody wants to chat out, anything anybody wants to mention before we jump into whatever we're going to be doing today? No. <laughs> no, no. I just, love it. No. Just late, late. Happy birthday to our DM by. Yeah, by the late time. happy birthday oh, tomorrow. Yes. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Um, Give him hearts in the chat. Yes, yes. It was last week my birthday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm doing the math. I'm doing the math. Uh, I, I literally got my age wrong for my birthday this year. I, I tweeted out that I was 37, and then my fiance Nina literally the next day was like, "You." You idiot! You're 36. I was like, wow. <laughs> oh wow! You aged yourself. Like, you short you yourself. I had to like sit there and be like, oh yeah, I am 36. <laughs> you, you just gained a whole year. That's like honestly I big brain. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like I got Hell it yeah. back. Dude, uh, I, I forgot I, my age the other day, and I literally just asked my Echo, and it told me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's the most millennial sentence I think I've heard. Like old, yeah. like old uh, aging millennial. The, yeah. the, yeah. the most millennial influencer thing. To yes, ever yeah, have. yeah. <laughs> But I, to be fair, how old am I? <laughs> if you're not like a milestone age, you usually forget. Like I forgot the other day how old I was. I went to the doctor yeah. when I got a concussion and they were like, and how old are you? And I was like, this isn't a sign of my concussion. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I promise this is not because I have a concussion. I just don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think like those milestones definitely are the big ones. But yeah, so thank you very much. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Um, but yeah, well, let's celebrate my birthday by playing some D&D. Uh, last, I have a little recap. Uh, this is a very short one this week. Very short recap. Uh, last time, the Heroes of Eve Evening Star have had a very, very long night. After the sudden appearance of Willow Song and her warnings of impending attack, the party fought off assassins, giant dragon beast abominations, and a small force of draconians that launched a skirmish strike against the town. With only a handful of casualties from their armed forces, but the townsfolk safe and the enemy repelled, the sun rises. Uh, as the sun rises, the party face the many questions and challenges set before them. Um, and that's literally what we're going to jump in. We ended things uh, straight after the battle in Evening Stars Town Square. Uh, you guys had uh, recovered what uh, treasure you could find. Um which I believe was a magical axe and uh, some gemstones and a little bit of treasure and things like that from the supposed leader, what seemed to be the person leading this force of draconians. Um, and that was pretty much where we, uh, where we finished. And, and yeah, as I mentioned, the sun is rising. You guys have fought all through the night um, and uh, we bring to a brand new, new day. Am I unconscious? Uh, oh gosh. I picked you up. I sure. remember that I was, um like not doing death saves but i yes. i stabilized you and then did a prayer of healing 
right that's right you okay, did. Cool. i was trying to remember exactly yes prayer of healing so which took 10 minutes which is why you did it after the fight yeah you healed a bunch of people yes yeah yes, 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 also yes. somebody asked me uh, about that uh it's not that i didn't have any spell slots for healing spells and had spell slots for other spells it was mm -hmm. that i'm a dumbass and mm -hmm. i thought that prayer of healing was instant and it's mm -hmm. not and so mm -hmm. that was the only healing spell i had and i'm changing mm -hmm. that after the next long rest I've done that so many times. Just assumed a spell is instant, and then mm -hmm. in the middle of the battle, the DM's like, uh, 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 uh. "Yeah, I was like, yeah. this is such a great yeah, healing circle, spell." Many other ones, yeah, of course, yeah. Mm. You'd be like, "Wow, why wouldn't I take this? This is amazing." Yeah, oh, that's why. That's why. Yeah, I learned that about oh. Fine Steed. Fine Steed is mm -hmm. ten minutes cast time. Oh, I'm like horsey, and then like. <laughs> 10 minutes later I, yeah man fine seed is one that i i always uh I, I always wreck on it and just say that like yeah you can just it's it's a paladin like come to me my faithful yeah. steed and it just appears like every time like what is it doing um, 10 minutes away what is my steed yeah. doing over there like is it I'm from not doing like the ethereal plane healing. or something it's yeah. eating ethereal grass let him have fun <laughs> god have some travel time digest just, take a nap yeah, exactly just chilling you know He's chilling just, does does he man have to summon battle cat no he just points the sword at, at cringer and then bam you know that's how it is are you saying uh, every paladin is he man that's crazy well let me he man wow. is on another level than every or paladin she or she no, i just i'm right? just saying that like he man deserves a little more respect than like a level two paladin is all i'm saying damn you know now shady's is respecting level two paladins this is I just turning into it he's like I, I am yes i'm doubling <laughs> down i'm doubling down yes. you're making nizki growl <gasps> Nizki, He's level four upset. paladin is on the same level. Tell the, it's fine. Tell the people you're upset. I'm in a stage fright now. There we go. <sighs> I can see it in the face, though. Yeah. She's very the angry. Sleepy eyes. Yeah, angry, angry face. Um, but yeah. So there you go. Uh, so everyone is conscious. I mean, I was just gonna say, regardless, Agnes, you as long as you weren't dying, which I'm pretty sure we we rectified <laughs> yeah, anyway. I wasn't. You came Thank close. Tarkle, you came close. Tarkle, uh, stabilized me, right? Yeah, that was That's awful. Cool. Well, the Thanks, first time, bro. I think the first time. The second yes. time, I think uh, Azara did. Yes, yeah, that is true. Uh, many. So the one one key thing to to point out is as this battle has concluded, um, the what the the kind of militia, the the armed forces that were still in the Evening Star, because most of your armed forces you had actually sent out to sort of clear out other territories. They've been on like you know rotating through shifts and things. Um, they did defend the town. There's no major damages. There's nothing really to repair or fix. There will be some minor works to the outer sort of walls that were being built and things like that. Um, but one thing you notice is that these draconians, these kind of like what you might have thought of as dragonborn or, or very strange dragonborn, um, there are no bodies of them. All of them either... Uh, burst into flames and exploded. They turned to stone and then crumbled away into dust. They melted down into pools of poisonous liquid and then quickly evaporated. There are no bodies left of those who attacked you. Um, they are all gone. Great. Less work for us. Yeah. 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 Or for our uh, people. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, I think that once the battle settled down, Tarkal would just start, because I remember at least on the battlefield, there were those that were guarding uh, the entrance to the village square or like along the top side. They were guarding the inn. They were guarding the, the dressing Okay, game. so I would, yes. I would, Tarkal would just walk over and just start checking to see if anyone had actually been injured, mm -hmm. make sure that the people's spirits are okay, etc. cetera. Uh, yeah, a young, uh, young soldier is just like, uh, no, my lords, no, no, we received word that the town crier came down um, with a number of soldiers. They, they roused everybody and, and we got as many as we could into the basement of the inn or into the basements of like some of the larger buildings. And I think we've managed to hold them. Uh, it wasn't a very large force. It just, they were really tough. They were tough to take down for us. I mean, obviously you and, and, and uh, the lady and, and the magister, I know you made quick work of them, but th this was a tough enemy for us to fight. Like we had, uh, without magic, I don't know if we would have been able to defeat them. But uh, luckily, nobody seems hurt. We, we, they seem to be more focused on. Um, well, it seemed to be like they were waiting for something uh, rather than setting about attacking us. Yeah, um, I think we will we'll discuss uh, my sister and I and our advisors what they were waiting for. I think we have some idea, but. Uh, good. You guys have earned a good, well, day now that the sun is up, and we'll be sure to treat Aaron good as well for getting the word out. He did a good job, my lord. You should definitely be proud of him. He uh, he was very quick and very efficient, uh, delivered the word as fast as he could. Um, should I should I let people know that they that tomorrow perhaps 
focus on just sort of repairing and, and recovering rather than building and things like that. We were quite a lot of people were were focused on building the walls over the last few weeks. Um, yeah, I'll I'll talk to I'll talk to uh, the Baroness, but I I think a day of rest and relaxation is probably in order after something like this, as opposed to focusing on the walls. But if if my sister thinks differently, we'll we'll talk to you. Very good. Just send word to us, uh, sir, and we'll we'll make word word, word on that. And then the soldiers, you know, this you don't think that they're particularly in charge, but they're just they kind of go back to their mates who are all sort of whispering and sort of what did he say? Like, oh, what did, blah, blah, blah. I can't believe you went over and spoken to him. Like, they just seem to be, you know, a, a particularly confident soldier who just came over to speak to you. But uh, they start spreading the word around. They they kind of like spread the spread the message and, and go about their work and things like that. Um, yeah. Cool. 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 Wasn't Anything? Willow Song here? She is up at the keep. So uh, that was one of the things is um, you during that very first attack, the uh, dr uh, there was a, a half dragon assassin, um, and when he struck Willow Song, Karkle seemed to really suffer from it, um, and so she she decided to hold hold up in the keep uh, to prevent there being more risk to Tarkle. Or so you think. Um, I think during this time, while Tarkle's talking to soldiers, to avoid mm -hmm. going back to the keep and running into Willow Song, lest she not do mm -hmm. something stupid, Azara, knowing that a long rest will be coming, is gonna like gather up do this any. Thing. No, no, <laughs> she's gonna gather up any injured soldiers or injured huh. citizens and like bring them around her and use her last remaining spell slots to just mm -hmm. prayer appealing yeah, sure. and make sure that everybody's yeah. like tip top shape. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, like, how many spell slots do you have? Like, is this one prayer of healing left, or is this like? Oh no, I got, I got like, uh, all my first levels, which okay. is prayer of healing, is another. Like, but I have all my second levels. Okay. I have a, a third level left, so yeah, that's enough to like heal everybody. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that like, yeah, you begin kind of gathering people up. Um, I think Dusk would be up at the keep and things like that. Down here, probably uh, Baragon and Erez, uh, the two lion folk who who came with Clive. Um, where you know Clive has been appointed the warden, uh, Baragon and Erez have kind of taken on as like his second in command, and they kind of manage the town militia a bit more. Um, they kind of have coordinated, and you find out that most of the injured were taken to one of the shops nearby, probably okay. Hulda's shop, the alchemy shop actually, and they were using that as like a triage. Um, and there's there's definitely a few injured soldiers. There's definitely a couple who um, sadly didn't make it, who have perished, but then there are others who are injured and you can kind of gather them up. Most of the citizens don't seem to have been killed. It seems okay. to uh, mostly be anybody who was fighting back were the ones who are injured. Um, and yeah, you gather those up and they're very grateful. You know, the soldiers are, oh, thank you, thank you, Lady Azara. Thank you, Magister. Um, you know, very uh, happy to uh, apply praise. Holder is... Oh well, you know, I've been trying to do my best, but thank you for your magic, Magister. You know, I've only got a few, uh, uh, only a couple of healing potions, but I've been trying to do my best with what bandages and things that I've got. Um, but uh, keep these boys in fighting spirits. Azara, always looking for an opportunity, will very <laughs> kindly say, "Of course, you know, I, you have such few potions and such few resources. We wouldn't want you to spend all of those potions when we could take them out on the road. When I have plenty of magic to give to." these well, I, poor soldiers yeah, i do have i do have the ones that um that you know one of the agreements of me coming here was to provide you and, and the others with it i do have the two that i normally provide for the month um and they'll f fetch those out uh luckily nobody i couldn't sadly most of the people who came to me on death's door i couldn't save anyway but, mm. and they'll pass you two regular potions of healing wait is it two i have it in my so. inventory i'm just checking just triple checking. Okay, you can triple two. check. I'm, I'm telling you it's two. It's two. <laughs> yeah. I'm just triple checking. <laughs> yep. Uh, but they will pass you two uh, for this month. Uh, okay. Two two regular hit potions. Um, nothing extra. Nothing fancy. Um, so my my charms didn't work. They gave you the two that they have. Uh, that was it. You suspect right. that any of the other yeah any any other healing supplies have gone into uh, triage uh, for the soldiers as best as they could. I mean, that's fine, I guess, whatever. <laughs> nice. Cool. Uh, I think and Tarkal would head back over to, like, mm -hmm. probably probably Agnes first. Or, like, mm -hmm. I mean, just assuming that everyone's in the same area. I know that Azar is healing people, too. Um, mm -hmm. 
but he'd kind of just like sit down by Agnes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just like, like slumping it on the ground or like, like arms, you know. arms on knees and like kind of hands like behind his head. Tired. Mm-hmm. Um, Agnes so- also is like, you know, just newly conscious and super beat up and like <laughs> blood crusted on her face and is also kind of like thousand yards staring. So it's How are you just doing? Maybe slump against like the well or something like that. Sort yeah. Like, ugh, just pushing your backs against it to rest against. Uh, I'm I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for helping. Yeah, helping. Um, obviously, I may owe you an apology. Um, uh, Willow Song is she's deceived me in some ways Agnes kind of like shakes her head like clearing the fog because like talking about this relationship after having been in a battle is like trying to remember like why does this matter and she kind Mm -hmm. of just like I assume that he's kind of sitting down next to her against the wall and she'll kind of just like put an arm around him and lean her head against his and be like, I'm just glad you're okay. Thanks. But when Willow song was hurt on back in the keep, I, I felt that like physically, like as if, as if we're tethered to each other. What could cause that? She said to me that, uh, I, I made a promise and it, that she lied to me and that it was more than she had laid out before me. So I, I had promised to protect her. And I, I, with that promise, she must have used some kind of magic uh, to tether my body to hers or my will or my, my life. I just know that when she was hurt, I, I felt that pain. Is that something you want? No, no. I mean, if, if it's something I would at least like to know before I tie my life force to someone else, that, that that's, what the, what, that's what the deal is. I mean, I mean that's I, what I would think. I just, you know, you haven't really wanted to take my relationship advice, so I just <laughs> want to make sure. I no, I know. It's, I mean, this, is, this isn't a relationship. This was, this was just deceit. Um, but even still, she she's def- she defied her mother to make sure I was okay, to make sure we, that Evening Star, was okay. So she sounds, well, she sounds as messed up as I was when I was in love. And he says, he says that he like rolls his eyes and... When you were in love, meaning well, not now? No, I mean, just when I was... You know, when you're caught up in it, does it work the same for girls? I've never really, <laughs> I've never really had a conversation like this with Agnes, guys. It was just me and dad. Agnes gets uncomfortable and she's like, I, uh, well, the, the thing is, uh, sometimes you're born into something and you go along with it until one day something shocks you awake and you realize it's not what you wanted all along and as much as you may have observed i'm not a huge fan of willow song Mm. i can have compassion for a change of heart but i don't have leeway for having lied to and hurt you so if you want to talk to her first then go talk to her but otherwise i i we all need to go and do some magical fixing. Okay. And what, what if there is no fixing the tie between us? We, I mean, there has to be right. Azara, Azara yeah. would know there has There's to be always, some way. Azara can do it. Azara can do anything. You'll be fine. Okay. Okay. I guess, I guess I should head to the keep first and talk to her before. Do you want company? <sighs> I don't, I don't want her to feel like we're cornering her and attacking her because she, she did defy her mother, who obviously her mother 
I mean, even more so deceived me, telling me I'd be her gardener. Do you want me to hide outside the door? I mean, maybe, I guess. I don't, I don't mean, I don't think she would attack me. And I mean, I will, I will, Agnes, if there's one thing, and, and like Tarkal will kind of like, this This whole time he hasn't like really been looking at you talking. Like I haven't been, like Tarkal hasn't been looking, he's kind of been looking down, but he'll look to you and be like, I, I will tell you everything that she says regardless. But if you want to listen, uh, I, I would probably, I just don't want, I don't want to do what she did to me. I don't need to act in deceit and shadows. That's only for when, uh, you know, combat. That's not how I like to handle relationships. I think that's a good distinction. So maybe, maybe, maybe I'll talk to her upstairs and, and it's fine if you guys are downstairs. So you're within danger shot if anything were to go wrong. If I don't hear from you in an hour, I'm setting her on fire. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. And I, yeah, I guess, I guess, I think Tarkle will like start walking, but he's going to look for, uh, like, look to see what Azara and Clive are doing as well, just to make well, sure. I, I would very much like to know what Clive was doing while this conversation was going on. Like, is Clive still Dark Souls rolling around, like, to get rid of his <laughs> excess energy, or has he moved on to other things at this point? Yeah, everyone's like, like, worn and dreary from this, but like, Clive is on an adrenaline high. Like probably yeah. midpoint in that conversation, probably like the conversation's over, but he would like walk by and give like huge like swats on the back, and be like, "Ah, oh, that was the greatest day ever, wasn't it?" <laughs> yeah, it was, like, yeah. It was a everyone. good one. So oh, good. That was great. We should okay. head out and do more of that. In in a while. All right, yeah. I'll go upstairs. I'll get ready. I'll get you like five minutes. I'm good with that, lads. I, no, I, I think we're going to need, I mean, it's the sun just came up. Maybe we need some food. Maybe like an hour, maybe eight. But why not? No. Well, I mean, it's, we, we just, we protected the town. So we have to let the town settle. Um, and I mean, Agnes almost died twice. So Agnes points to the blood. Oh, hey, well, you know. Right. Uh, we could, I'll give it an hour. You can clean up and take your, take your sleepy time, feel a little better. I'll, uh, I'll just like roll away mid sentence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think like at, at some point, as like you see Clive rolling away, um, because Baragon's kind of like, Baragon's kind of very similar to Clive. He sees Clive and he's like, oh, bright leader. And like he starts rolling along beside <laughs> you, just like the two of you kind of like, Aah! You kind of like go off to like cause trouble, or I don't know. Baron's probably got like swigging out of a bottle that he's found as well. Yeah, whatever um, we can do to just like roll around town and be toxic, that would be that'd be great. <laughs> be toxic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, and what about Zara? So Zara, you know, coming back from Holder's Holder's uh, camp and things like that, uh, Holder's hut. Um, yeah, hut. Has Tarkal walked off yet, or is he still around? No, I mean, I think that it depends how long that, I guess, you know, those things probably could happen simultaneously, right? The yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Then I think Azara like, would just uh, kind of wander back over to the group watching Clive roll away and just kind of stand silently with her hands in front of her, like just staring at Tarkal. Not in an accusatory way, but just she doesn't want to say anything first. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think Tarkal would be like, <sighs> okay, um, Willow Song deceived me, and I just had this this whole conversation with Agnes. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, you, both of you have uh, insight that I could glean from when it comes to a person. You mm-hmm. know, uh, what do they say? Uh, uh, love blinds. Mm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so basically that. Um, and I apologize for not immediately believing that Willow Song was up to no good. Um, but like I said to Agnes, she's in the keep. We might be tethered to each other where if she feels pain, I feel pain. So I know you might want to blow her head off. You mm-hmm. might want to blow my head off. Um, mm-hmm. You could two for one it. I would hope you wouldn't. Uh, I'm going to go and speak to her. Everyone's welcome in the keep when I do. 
there are no more secrets about Willow Song. Um, I've, and then Tarko like looks around like, not much matters once your heart's broken, you know? So I'll just spill everything. And uh, the most important thing is that we protect Evening Star. Yes? Uh, Azara's face kind of softens once he says not much matter once your heart breaks because she kind of also realizes in that moment she's like way older than him and like (laughs) an old ass elf and this is just like a kid who got thrown into being a royal um and kind of takes pity on him and is like I appreciate the growth that it seems that we've both gone through these past couple of months and I appreciate your apology I also should apologize for not realizing that you are a young man who was in love and for possibly putting my very black and white pragmatic expectations on you when it came to Willow Song. That being said, a baron who possibly might be forcibly linked to a fae creature whose mother would like to kill you is not good for the kingdom. And I will do my best to right this wrong. Uh, However, I would like to request that on matters such as magic and the fae wild, maybe my advice is heeded regardless of lust. Yes, I mean, I, I mean, I, I didn't know she was from the Fae when I fell in love with her, but of course, yes, you know way more and you make a, an excellent point. If if there's no way to break this bond, then I, I cannot remain barren of Evening Star. There's Well, let's not put the cart before the horse. I don't, that's not what I meant. I just meant let's not let you remain possibly cursed. Hmm. You can fix it, right, Azara? I can try speaking of which in that moment azara will remember because mika remembered that she has immediate contact with melodonis um is it a sending stone uh yeah it was basically a sending stone you can use like you can use the sending spell to contact um us. then she'll excuse herself and tell her compatriots that she'll meet them back in the keep after she's done in her tower. And she's going to go send a message to Melodonis to get here as soon as he can, because she needs uh, his help arcane wise. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I've fully determined exactly. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. You said so, he's, yeah. he's our fast travel. He can teleport us anywhere and yeah, our magical it, contact. That, it was, it was more that it was, I'm, I haven't fully like decided how powerful he is. He can oh, okay. definitely cast teleport. So he he can he knows up to seventh level spells like but okay. he's only got the one seventh level. Um, but so I think he, that would make him about a level thirteen spellcaster. Uh, yeah, I think that makes him a level thirteen wizard ish. Like in, like I don't normally give NPCs class levels, but right. about that. Um, that's fine. Uh, yeah. So you head back to the tower, Azara. You're going to send Melodonis a message. That's mm-hmm. fine. Um, you basically get a response back, no matter you know what whatever message you're basically saying like hey can you come to evening star as quick as you can mm-hmm. uh i'm assuming yes you'll get a message back which is along the lines of just like ah uh, lady azar yes i will be able to attend to uh hopefully by the afternoon i do have some errands to run here in arabelle but i will endeavor to make my way to evening star by the noon sun and that's the message you get back Perfect. Um, uh meanwhile so tarkle you're heading back to evening star itself uh, yeah, basically, well, uh, probably back to, you said that Willow Song is at the keep. Well, that's where right. she said she was going to be. <laughs> okay, well, I would, yeah, I would head back to the keep and for some reason believe that she wouldn't lie to me again. Okay. <laughs> uh, you you arrive at the keep, um, <clears throat> you know, the soldiers are still running about things. Alyssa stays in the town to help coordinate defenses and things like that. Um, when you arrive, uh, you're, you're sort of... Uh, uh, not like servant, but sort of your butler, I guess, uh, Nigel, uh, who runs, who works in the, the keep itself. Nigel, good fellow. Um, it's just like, ah, oh, master, Lord Crown Silver, um, your, your lady companion, um, has made herself quite at home. Um, mm. she is, uh, currently up in your chambers, I believe, um, uh, expecting you, uh, 
Yes. Um, yes, I'm going to go to her now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Um, and uh, you can see that, like, yeah, there's like things. Yeah, Nigel kind of, you know, motions up, and and you make your way there. Uh, when you when you went to your chambers, like, you find that, like, you know, food has been brought up. Um, that there is, uh, you know, several furs have been sort of thrown. Um, and and she's just sort of sat on the floor. Um, doesn't seem to like the bed's there, but is just sort of sat on the floor. Um, and she seems to just be sort of um, like waiting as if she's been waiting for you to return. Mm -hmm. So I'll just, I'll kind of, uh, I won't knock, obviously it's my room, but I'll just open yeah. the door. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I guess Tarkle's not like, Tarkle's not, I was going to just, Tarkle would just walk in and sit on the edge of the bed, like facing her if that's possible. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have she, the high she ground. Looks at you. Yeah, absolutely. She looks at you. Um, so you're kind of really in your bed, you know, you're sat on the edge of this uh, quite, you know, well-made heavy wooden bed. She's sat on the floor on a pile of like furs that have been brought up. And you can see like a plate of food has been sort of like picked at and things like that. Um, and she looks at you and, and the sort of more waifish element, the more sort of like more timid element of Willow Song has gone. Um, and there is a much more, co there's a much more confident look in her eyes and she does like stare you dead in the eyes like she mm -hmm. is not looking away from you like her hair's kind of spilling around her body she's kind of leaning on like one arm sort of draped down and she just wordlessly stares at you um almost waiting for you like it, almost like a game of chicken right like who's gonna speak first? well this is another woman that needs me to speak first right three in a row this is this is well actually agnes didn't do that this is ridiculous okay um <sighs> God. Okay, I wish Tarkle was. I should have made him gay. Okay. Um. Let, let me tell you something, Jonathan. That would not have changed. <laughs> I, I could have. I could have done this anyway. <laughs> would have been William song instead of Willow song. Well, maybe. Like you know, it's. it's you may. Fine. You may just go for young, a uh, young uh, man looking looking for love. Uh, I know. Didn't matter I which know. way it fell. It was. Rest in peace. All right. Yeah, but at least I would have had a break. It would have been a little bit of a breakup. It's fine. Okay. Um, okay. What What are we going to do? An excellent question. I could feel that you were hesitant to call on my power. Can you blame me? No. But I do think it is dismissing. A rather powerful gift. One that could greatly benefit you and your kingdom. A gift given in deceit is not a kind one. The world isn't a very kind place. But, but yes. you pretended to be. I did. I did. People lie, Tarkle. Everyone lies. Everyone's playing a part. Everyone has secrets that they keep from others. I mean, secrets were kept from you since you were a boy. This life, this nobility was sprung on you. Do you think that, do you think that your sister or your companion, the sorceress, perhaps the lion man is more the honest type, but everyone lies. And yes, mine were perhaps were for more nefarious means. My mother is a very terrifying woman, a very terrifying being, I should say. And she taught me to be the way I am. I was given a mission, you and your little kingdom. It's what I it's what I was born to do, it's what I was taught to do, to lie, to manipulate. I'm afraid that you aren't this was not personal. It was. It was not done in a uh, to to hurt you. And I have admitted it. I I have revealed to you, and I hold no more secrets. I do not feel the need to. But that doesn't change. That doesn't have to change what we have. That doesn't have to change the power I've given you, at least. Even if you even if you wish to look upon me ill favorably, I can be a great benefit to you. I can be a great benefit to your this fledgling kingdom that you wish to build. You are you have so much potential, Tarkal. You have so much potential. You could be a great 
leader. You already are in many ways. What you lack is power. And I can give that to you. You were born and raised to come here and train to deceive, but you have defied your mother. Trained to deceive many others. I'm quite a bit older than you think. I've, I've done this game many times with other lords, with other families, with other people. Which game? The game always... where you deceive your mother, where you betray your mother, or where you deceive no. for her? That I've never defied my mother. I've never had a reason to. And she looks at you. She doesn't say it, but you get a very heavily sort of until you, like un mm. an unsaid until you. Ooh -woo. Yeah, ooh -woo. Um No, but I've always been a tool at my mother's disposal, much like those creatures that you fought this evening that attacked your town. I realize that now. I thought that I was her favorite, a favored daughter, but I was really nothing more than a convenient tool in her plan for revenge. Every lord or lady or hero that I've lied to, that I've manipulated, They've always been the same, always craving power, always looking to get what they deserve, always full of lies and deceit themselves. That's what makes them so easy to trick. But you're a little bit different. I think for the first time, you spoke with me about things that I care about, and I, I genuinely felt that you care about those things. The land, you enjoy the quiet places of the world. I felt an actual connection with you. And so, yes, I, I betrayed my mother's trust. Yes, I defied her wishes. I did not wish for you to die. I still feel that you have so much potential to offer. And I want to help you realize that. I think you're very misguided on how relationships and people should work when you want to build someone up because you see potential. Well, <laughs> your kind don't live very long. And well, let's just say that the environment that I have been raised in is certainly conductive to what you're suggesting. In my world, we do not trust each other. Even my mother keeps secrets from me. She lies to me. That was what I believed the world was until I met you and your companions. You seem to, the bond between you and your sister is particularly, well, at first I found it irritating, to be quite honest. You have this implicit trust with each other, this, this genuine affection and care, something that I've not really encountered before, not between siblings, certainly. I mean, that's what I offered you, and he'll stand up at that point. It, uh, it, it, it is, and that is one of the reasons that I'm here. I do care about you, and I know I lied, and I know I, I kept things from you, but I, I would not be here if I did not care about you. I could have let you die. I could have let this whole town be attacked and burnt and all of your friends and family killed in their beds, but I didn't. I came here because of you. Right. <clears throat> well... There, I think I just need some time. Obviously, you want to give me power. You, do you want your mother dead? What, do you, what is it that you want? I think that that is something I need time to answer. My flight from where I was being kept was rapid. I have not had much time to consider my own actions until this evening. I need time to decide what I want. I do know I want to regain your trust, perhaps. I want to help you. That I know for certain. I want to help you. I want to keep you alive. You are precious to me. But I appreciate you need time. That is fine. I imagine that your companions and the sorceress and your sister, 
will likely have questions about my mother's plans and the attack. I am happy to answer them. Right. Okay. Let me talk to them first and lay the framework. Very well. Just, just one question. You left the battlefield um, and needed to hold up in the keep so that I wouldn't be injured, but well, if you're much older, as you say, and obviously much more powerful than you had let on. You're Continue. not in any danger. It is. It, it was just for my sake. You, you... you saw that the, the arrow that pierced my chest, it was a mild irritant to me. It nearly killed you. This form that I currently hold, a form that I do find rather appealing is not my true form. Mother has bound me to it. I cannot leave this form. I cannot become my real self until this spell is broken. I am strong. I am resilient in it, and I do still hold some magic. Magic I can channel through you, especially. But I am limited. There was no risk to me. At worst, I would have perhaps been mildly injured by this attack but you would have died long before me got it right i okay. will wait here if your sister or the sorceress have questions or i can wait somewhere else if you would prefer no stay here and i'll i already stood up so tarkle's just gonna walk through the door and close it behind him yeah, you like yeah, you yeah, you just close it behind you. Yeah, you wouldn't look behind you, so you don't see anything. But yeah, you just leave. Uh, I think that Tarko would just uh, since he was the first one to go to the keep, he would just head down to the main uh, dining area where I think in my mind it's like you walk in and then there's that big old table, right? Yeah, well, look, I was going to ask Anna, like Agnes, like you obviously see Tarko leave, and and he did make that offer of like if you want to like listen at the door or like you know you'd be welcome to. Would would Agnes have done that? Would you have been sort of waiting for him in the corridor, like in case something happened to him, like because this no. conversation was not whispered. This was like if you were nearby, you you probably would have heard the whole thing. I don't think so because he had, based on their conversation, she had like kind of given him space to deal with mm -hmm. it. And then assume that okay. he would come talk to her when he was done. Sure. Unless okay. an hour so, like, had passed, in which case then she would start yeah. setting things on No, it, this was like 10 minutes at most. So like maybe Agnes is waiting downstairs, sort of in yeah. that, the dining area where the long table is. Nigel's I think she probably... would want a snack, some tea. Yeah, I think like Nigel and um, and uh, who's your Audrey, who is your gnome housekeeper, have like made food or like hot drinks, maybe like hot chocolate uh, for Agnes, you know, because it is, you know, you guys have been fighting through the night. You're like clearly bloodied. Audrey's probably like wiping your face, Agnes, and like wiping all the blood off of you and things <laughs> like that as well. Like, oh, dear. Oh, and she's like wiping you clean and things like that. Um, getting like ice packs, <laughs> fantasy ice packs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. So, so yeah, so then I guess Tarko would have just been, he just, after the conversation, he would find his way to the table and he'd have a mimosa because it's early in the morning and that's probably the appropriate sure. beverage of choice. Uh, Agnes will motion one of those for me. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's your keep. You can have what you want. <laughs> you know, this is if you want mimosas, you have uh, the D&D &D equivalent of a mimosa. Um, if, if there's one thing I deserve after a battle like that, it's a mimosa. Yeah. And then I think, like, for the sake of for the sake of brevity, you know, Azara, you sent your message to Merylonis. You can come back in and be waiting with Agnes as well. Also and drinking Clive... a mimosa. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Cli... After like, battle mimosas. Nate... <laughs> what What do you want Clive to be doing? <laughs> like, mimosa. you kind of roll around. There's no. Mimosa. There's nothing to fight. What like whatever nonsense and d like debauchery me and me and my fellow lion boy can get into yeah. sure yeah i mean you guys probably you you would probably find uh that in the inn in the 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 tresim king um mm. after this battle because like the soldiers are all having the same thing right like they either are feeling like oh my god we made it through that fight can you believe that or they're like man i need to drink i've seen some shit so like the the inn is packed even though this is like five in the morning like all of the soldiers who were fighting have like crammed into the inn 
and everybody is just drinking like they are getting black you know blackout drunk blasted um so you and baragon can certainly get involved in those shenanigans if that is the desire um not necessarily in the drinking but like you know like in the just like having fun like hanging out with all of the 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 militia and soldiers basically i'll i'll just trot my way in there sure like yeah it's kind of like oh it all goes quiet Warm up's over. Who's up for a spar? <laughs> like a couple of like the soldiers like look at you. One of them like goes to cheer, but realizes that you're not like like is like uh and everyone's just like come drink with us, Warden. It's a drink, drink, have a drink, look, arm wrestle. Like a couple of people like offering to arm wrestle you, but I don't think anybody wants to fight you. <laughs> um, you do hear a you do hear a a very loud. Uh, and you feel something tugging on your your hand, and you look down and you see a little Kenku uh, covered in like armor, basically with like a blacksmith's hammer in his hand. Uh, and he looks up, and uh, you see Donk Wobble, your blacksmith. Donk um, Wobble. <laughs> Donk Wobble. Uh, and he just uh, makes the sound of like tankards hitting together and like a glug 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 uh, sound. Ah, the little one's up for it then. I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge him to arm wrestle. <laughs> okay, you all right? You want to fight Clonk Wobble? Uh, arm wrestle Clonk Wobble? Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, make a strength check. Just d20 plus strength. Okay. He's a blacksmith. I'm gonna give him a plus plus two to his strength. That's a uh, not great. That's a twelve. 19 uh so <laughs> as you'll think he's got like a little wing arm and you're like wrestle with him and then you see that underneath the wing are like <laughs> actually quite big like bird muscles and he's like <laughs> and he's starting to like tip your arm down to the side of the table bird roll muscle. again we'll do like best best out mm-hmm. of three or best out of five. Oh, um, he's bringing it hasn't he, he is. 12 again 19 plus 2 21 he pins your arm down like like you probably because like clive's not expecting it right like mm-hmm. he just puts your arm down like immediately and he looks at you and you just hear a who wants another round in your voice how'd you do that lad and you just you hear like the sound of a hammer hitting an anvil and he flexes his wing like a bicep i see how it is you defeat me and steal a part of my soul? I'll take that back right from you proper. Rematch. <laughs> and then we get like an evening of Clive and, Cl- and Donk Wobble. <laughs> the adventures of Clive Ooh. and Donk Wobble for the rest of the evening. <laughs> I like to assume he just constantly beats me for like a good hour. I'm just like, yeah, I mean, you are definitely stronger than him, but I think like this couple of like, you're just thrown off of the victories because like he's strong, but he's not Clive strong. You just, you know, there was something in there that was playing with it, but he definitely like, yeah, beats you at a few games and rounds. Um, and then eventually you probably managed to win one over on him, but it's definitely kind of like an ongoing, like five to dunk wobble, two to Clive kind of score going on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, and I think that the town gets very in. Meanwhile, whilst the adventures of Clive and Donk Wobble are going on, uh, yeah, Tarkle comes down to find his other companions. Yeah, so we're mimosing, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. And I think I would just like quick, quick spiel and tell them basically everything that Willow Song said um, mm-hmm. and then kind of just like look at them like, what do? <laughs> what do you want? Oh. Being honest, I want her dead. Um, I think I don't know. <sighs> She's so. Dead. Sometimes rooms accidentally set on fire. I know, but then I set on fire. Oh right, Azara, basically... could you fix that part? Well, I have an inquiry out to our friend Melodonis. Hopefully, he can come and help assess our uh, situation. Um, I also thought Mark. Uh, while she was talking to Melodonis, she would have had mm-hmm. Sara Lee start looking into fey curses or like fey wild warlock packs. How to break mm-hmm. warlock packs. <laughs> How to break curse. So she's yeah. off doing some arcane research. 
Okay. But focused on like Feywild, right? Focused like, on Feywild kind of... and Warlock Pass. Okay, sure. Yeah. All right. Um, if uh, in the meantime, if we need to keep Tarkal safe, it seems like we need to isolate and hold Willow Song. She... That's a quick question. Yes. Tarkal, when you said that you want her dead, how, like, is that driven by anger or is that like a sincere, like, Tarkal, like, no, that's dead right it's now. definitely emotional. That's why even when he said, I don't know, it's like it just. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Like right. Super, right. super visceral. Sure. Um, um, so as far as keeping me safe goes, I mean, and she'll tell you this when we can call her down, honestly, it doesn't matter. She wants me alive and she wants me safe. And like, obviously I know we can't trust her. She's proven that, but she's being very forthright with, you know, her intentions of, yes, I deceived you. It's fine. I've done this to many others, but not like you, blah, blah, blah. So I do think she wants me alive, but I, I don't know. It, I, I, I don't feel in danger physically by her being around, but obviously it is not a good thing for the Baron of Evening Star to be bound. I don't think, Taco, you're physically in danger being near her. I think you might be mentally in danger being near her. She has proven and is admitted to be manipulative and a master of such. And if you let your guard down around her, whether knowingly or unknowingly, she can worm her way back into your heart. I think physically we are in danger of her mother and her mother's army, which is another problem entirely right now. Does she want to be free of her mother? She said she doesn't know what she wants. She needs time, but there was, there is, there is a spell upon her that she wants broken that was placed by her mother. And she'll probably tell you that as well as she just told me. I don't think she's going to tell me anything that she won't tell you. Well, she until knows. she's firmly on our side, there is a small chance she could go back to her mother. I'm not saying that means that we should chain her up and throw her in the dungeons as much as that would please me. But I do think that we must keep her, unfortunately, close. Keep her on the side that would go against her mother. Keep her feeling that for now, she has a place here because unfortunately the most dangerous thing is someone who feels that they have nowhere to turn. And if that place to turn is back to her mother, then Evening star may be no more. I'm not saying Tarkal, and she like looks him in the eyes. I'm not saying you should woo her or say you forgive her or lie to her, but I think that we shouldn't, as much as this disgusts me, push her away. I mean, I gave her my room, so I don't know what else to do. Like, there's, there's not much beyond that that I'm capable of doing right now, but... Regarding her mother, she did say she would talk to you and Agnes and, and Clive and all of us here and tell mm -hmm. us her mother's whole grand plan for Evening Star and the plane of and Cormier and what have you. Well, if she's on our side, truly, then hopefully we can take that to heart. Being I want... That, oh, go ahead. Being that our, our warden, the, the den, ward of the den, our mm -hmm. warden... Mm -hmm. is from the Feywild. Maybe he has something to add to this conversation? Is he here? He's out arm wrestling, right? You have no mm -hmm. idea what he yeah. is. <laughs> like, he is currently in the inn, like, like probably, like, lifting Donk Wobble and throwing him. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Like a, yeah, <laughs> like, and he's, like, they're playing, like, a new game where they throw Donk and he has to glide into, like, a bucket <laughs> or something. Like, awesome. Uh, well, maybe we should send for him and his compatriots because they are from the Feywild as well and may offer some less loud insight. Mark, do, do I have any sense of the magic that I've now wielded for a while of like what type of magic it is? No, okay. I obviously know magic poison. Evil. I know it's related. Po I, I think yeah, you, you told me that, that I know that it's poisonous. poisonous element. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's no some poisonous element to the, the power that you could channel through your weapon, yes, but. Yeah. Okay, so then, yeah, I would just, I would, all right, that, that does sound like a plan. Should be, I mean, 
should we wait for Clyde before we talk to her? Do you guys want to talk to her now and get the spiel? I mean, also, you guys might get a better read on her than I am. Obviously, you are more apt to picking up good and bad from people. So maybe there is, I'm seeing her being completely honest. Maybe she is being deceitful. I don't know. Agnes kind of like finishes the rest of the mimosa, wipes some crusty blood off her forehead and is like, I'm, I'm going to need a rest first. Zara downs her mimosa and agrees. <laughs> um, sure. And if we are keeping her here and keeping her close, there will be plenty of time to chat with her later after a bath and some sleep and another bath. She just kind of stares off into the middle distance, realizing that it's been a long fucking night. <laughs> and I'll arrange with someone before I take my long rest to send for Clive. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Azara will also arrange for someone to put Willow Song in her own guest room. So Tarkle can have his room back as a okay. sign of good faith towards both I, of them. I think if you did that, if you like attempted to, I think Tarkle would tell you don't. Oh, really? Yeah. I think Tarkle is just going to like find, in my mind, this keep has a fireplace and like uh -huh. a, a couch near it. And that's where he's taking his mm -hmm. long rest. Well, he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't want to be associated with that room anymore. Like he walked in and that room is hers. Azara also has then secretly behind his back later on, we'll have ask Nigel to make up a guest room and just mm -hmm. let Tar and have Nigel let him know that like it's available if he wants sure. it. Yeah, I think that what that probably is is like after like uh you know, you guys will go off for your long rest, right? Like Nigel would probably uh come down, like, you know, and you're struggling to kind of like get comfortable, Taco. I mean, actually saying that Taco's like slept in the woods, you can probably yeah. sleep most places, right? Mm -hmm. Um but he, you do get a very gentle sort of wakening, like, my lord, a room has been prepared for you if you wish more comfortable arrangement. Or I Tarko will like, here. Tarko will nod, and then as long as it doesn't break my long rest, he's just he's just gonna wait till the fire goes out before he goes to the room. Yeah, no, it won't won't break it at all. Like, uh, it's not like you're being attacked. But yeah, oh my god, like, long uh, rest. And then you, yeah, you guys get it. You guys have a long rest. You guys can all have a long rest. Thank uh, goodness. Yay. Well, unless Clive is just like, we don't stop. The party don't stop. <laughs> Clive Don and Baragon's night. Let's Let go. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. We got two F4 Raiders. Uh, yeah, party don't stop, my dudes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, nice. nice. Big wobble uh, hours. Yeah, it's uh by by the time the sun is fully raised, you know, it'd probably be let's see. Yeah, you'd probably be looking at like 2 p.m. by the time you guys finish your long rest. Um and uh you <laughs> uh Clive, I, I think eventually like all of the soldiers that you're currently playing with, after about six hours of like drinking and like cheering and singing, there's a lot of singing, like a lot of like they start singing like war songs and they start singing drinking songs. Um, they all are like wiped out and they either fall asleep where they are or they, you know, in small groups make their way back to the barracks to like, you know, fall asleep. Um, even Donk is looking a little, little sleepy and he's like, <laughs> All right, let's, let's get you home, lad. And you just pick him up, carry him back to the blacksmiths. He's like, <laughs> carry him back to over the his shoulder. Yeah. I'm assuming I'm he's like throwing up behind me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's he's very very blackout. Uh, he, you know, his little wings are like all floppy, and you know, he's struggling oh. to kind of like hey, stay stay conscious. It's like um, pat him on the yeah. back. That's that's the weakness leaving the body. It'll make you stronger, lad. You know, like bait, like mama birds and baby birds. You just hear like bah! Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some, some, something comes out, like some sort of pellet uh, disgorges. Um, and I'll I'll uh, finally yeah. I'll get back. And as everyone's like finishing their long rest, I'm like, all right, time to sleep. And I will <laughs> yeah. I will now go to sleep. So like when you see Tarkle, like like uh, like Tarkle's like probably is still asleep by the couch, right? Like you know, like or like by the like the fireplace. There's like blankets that have been left out, like where Tarkle was sleeping. So like there's like cushions and blankets on the sofa in front of the fireplace. You walk in and you're like, oh, that looks good. And like yep, yep. like a big kitty just kind of like you know fluff up all the pillows and like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then curls up and goes to sleep. Yep. Um. 
Azara, uh, you are probably very rudely awoken. Well, not not rudely. Sarah's shriek wakes you up. Um, you hear a kind of like ah kind of scream come from downstairs, um, and you can hear what sounds like paper, like the sh- the scuffling of papers everywhere. Uh, probably just coming out. Although with an elven trance, maybe she was just like. Be, like beauty napping yeah you would have had like four hours of like meditation and then four hours of like just light activity of like you know looking you know cleaning or like you know whatever yeah uh, in my head she was taking a long four hour bath so she probably like leaps out of the bath like soaking <laughs> wet like grabs uh-huh. a robe and runs downstairs to make sure that sarah lee is okay yeah you do you know when you run downstairs i mean even before you arrive like as you're coming down your spiral staircase you hear mm-hmm. a, i'm so sorry my dear i was looking for magister azara this is her tower yes uh, i'm so sorry to startle you do not let my appearances deceive i'm really quite a gentleman and you hear Sarah like oh! <laughs> she's just like inconsistent wailing um as she's like trying to gather up papers that have gone scattering and you can see the faint burnt outlines of a teleport of like a teleport spell basically <laughs> he's teleported into your tower by accident oh my god <laughs> azara still completely drenched like sighs and like is rubbing her temple and starts like slowly descending the stairs she's like uh sarah lee melodonis melodonis sarah lee yeah i'm and she turned to sarah I'm, like, I'm, I'm so sorry i should have warned you he was coming i just assumed he would knock and she like looks at him my apologies i did set my teleportation for just outside the keep's walls but mm. teleportation can be a little unusual sometimes the 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 magical energies that you have conjured here uh, something of a bit of a moth to a flame it seems uh, you do you appear to be quite drenched do you do you require assistance uh, no no magic? i just and she uses a like mage hand to get him some tea um just Ooh, Keep yourself lovely. occupied. Feel free to read from the library. I need 15 yeah, yeah. minutes. And she goes well, back upstairs. <laughs> yeah, and he'll just be like, oh, well, Sarah Lee was it. Perhaps we can keep each other company. I know it is. And you hear like a conversation. <laughs> like, so what do you do here? <laughs> like he just ends up having a conversation with Sarah Lee, who's like stammering, like, research. And he's like, oh, really? Tell me. Poor girl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys come back down. Uh, Agnes and and Tarko, you guys wake up feeling mu- much fresher, your energy restored um, after the arduous kind of battle that you you once had. Um, and you guys, yeah, all, all wake up. I think I'm going to try to like get word out to everyone, Clive, Azara, everyone, mm-hmm. uh, that we should all have an audience with Willow Song in the dining hall mm-hmm. in an hour or two. When- uh, when as you do that, as you kind of step out, you see that uh, the one-eyed king is just sat <gasps> in front of Tarkal's room and is just watching it. Good, he, like, my liege. You, and you do I... see like a nod of the head, like yeah. Me yeah. Watching it. <laughs> I, yeah. I bow and say, "The Grand Protector, thank you." <laughs> wow. Just goes back to it. Like licks his licks his paw and is like cleaning himself as he watches the door. I've missed him. Uh, yeah, he still looks very old. Bless him. He looks like an old kitty now. Um, but yeah, he wants it. Uh, Azara, when you you come back down, uh, Melodonus is like pouring himself tea, and uh, you can see that an un- he's conjured an unseen servant, which is helping Sarah Lee clean up after Aww, him. That's um, nice. And he, yeah, he's just like, ah, are you refreshed, Master? Yes, thank you, and thank you for the help. Uh, now yeah. I hate to get right to business, but we have. The problem, and I, I assure you that I need complete discretion here, if you don't mind. Of course, I am. Uh, I am no, I am not bound to the War Wizards Council or or any political thing. And you are a good friend of my current employer. Uh, yes, discretion is uh, is a much valued commodity in my business. Wonderful, thank you. Um, it seems one of our own our dear baron has Mm. unfortunately struck a pact unwillingly with a fey creature and Uh. now their fates seem to be bound 
Yes, um, pacts, warlocks, yes. I have heard of these sorts of deals. Often a warlock, uh, one who engages in this sort of agreement, magical power in exchange for service or loyalty, but it is not, not out of the question that there are unusual caveats associated with it. I once knew of a fellow who had made a pact with a devil, um, and every time... Uh, Every time that uh, he conjured a spell, a mark would appear on his arm or some such thing. All mm. parts of the fine print of their contract. Fey creatures. Now, that is uh, unusual, uh, very mercurial, very fickle. No contracts for us to revise. These tend to be matters of uh, emotions, and the heart and narrative. Very tricky. Would you happen to know how to break said tricky pact seeing as if our dear baron uh is linked to said creature if she falls ill so will he mm, very difficult i can't say that i know off the top of my skull but i could look into the matter certainly i have many avenues of research available to me what would help is to um speak with the baron to analyze any sort of magical aura upon him and uh, get as much information as i could this will greatly aid me well you are absolutely Do you know the welcome. nature of the creature you say feywild is this is this a dryad is this a an arch fey is this a you know a, a hag perhaps or, or some such creature truthfully we are not quite sure and could also use your help determining that i'm sure mm. that would solve a lot of our questions well if they, if, if I, I if i could witness the creature but do you have do you know where this being is in our keep, as a matter of fact. Oh, well, that certainly makes things much easier, doesn't it? It does. And you are welcome to come and speak with both of them at will. We have their full cooperation, as this is oh. of dire importance. Well, I find the Baron's company most agreeable. I like the dear boy. It's always a pleasure to see him and the Baroness. Yes. I'm sure yes. they'd love to see you too, so shall we? Ah, you are too kind, Master. <laughs> yeah. And he licks his eyeball again. Um, so, Azar kind of so, cringes and leads him to the keep. <laughs> Very well. Uh, he just trots on by you. And like, Marilonis is like, he's like nearly like seven feet tall. He's like this black dragonborn with like horns and scales. He looks scary, but he's dressed in like these purple, gold, black robes. Um, and he just is, yeah, he just like smiles. Like, and guards see him and immediately like jump as they like walk past him. And he's like, hello, uh, as he walks past him. But yeah, he accompanies you and all of you find yourselves in the sort of, uh, again, by the fireplace with a sleeping Clive, you now see Clive just purring. You know, I don't know if he purrs, but he's there on the sofas, but like sleeping soundly. Probably, probably more snores. Snores, yeah, yeah like, like very snore, amplified though, right? purring. Yeah, awesome. Like a, a vibration, like snore, like a mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Uh, Azar will well just kind of... coming down. Oh, yeah. Is that with? Is this the meeting? Willow Song, if you go and summon her, yeah, but like I'm assuming that like she's not been uh I don't know if she's been called down specifically. I know that Agnes sent people to gather the rest of you, but I don't know if like somebody wants to go and get Willow Song or if you're gonna send uh, like if you ask Nigel to do it, Nigel is like I, I can, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like but you can tell he does not want to. He's terrified of her. Um I think then Tarko will just look to Agnes and Azara and be like you want me to get her? I think that the time has come for us to speak candidly about all this. Dark will just get up, like nod his head. Not like he's not mad at you, just gets up, nods his head. Because uh, even though canonically he canonically he obviously got a long rest, his dreams were not pleasant. Mm -hmm. Um so he still looks he, tired, like haggard, yeah, and, yeah, like bags under the eyes kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. he will uh, he will go get her and he will just open the door. He won't knock. Um, 
and okay. He'll... I mean, when you do, you see like like she's sleeping like naked on the on the furs and things like that, like the green dress just discarded on the floor. Um, and you just walk in and like she's there basically. Mm -hmm. Um, doesn't seem to be ashamed. Like literally, just looks over her shoulder and just sort of like regards you cult, like quite coolly. Um, yeah. Uh, my sister and everyone is downstairs when you're ready. Very well. She'll just stand up and start getting dressed, and you know, uh, and then we'll follow you down. Tarkal has literally no reaction to her being naked. By the way, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I figured like he just yeah. asked. and like, and again, she's the same. Like, she just doesn't, you know, doesn't seem to be embarrassed by it. But yeah, basically, get so in front of you. The trigger, the trigger for Tarkal was when she said, "This is not the form I want." That form died to him, so he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't feel anything about her form anymore. Like, yeah. That's fair. There's yeah, no attraction. I think that makes perfect sense, right? Like, yeah. you've realized that this isn't the real yeah. person. This isn't the mm -hmm. real creature. Right? And obviously, this between is, but also between a... her demeanor, like you said, completely changing. She's no longer soft. She's not the things that Tarkal fell for. So, yeah. Uh, cool. Okay. That's actually interesting. I'm going to make a quick roll here. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. She, she kind of follows uh, behind you. She brings you down. Meanwhile, like as you emerge, uh, Merylonis is like, Baroness, so marvelous to see you again. I love what you've done with the place. Uh, <laughs> I curtsy. Like, yeah, he's just being like very, again. very, yeah, making small pleasantries and conversations and things that's like that. Um, Agnes slips uh, into etiquette mode with him, like very yeah. gracious <laughs> and curtsying yeah. and motion. Yeah, to like chair. He, he's. He's very gentlemanly, right? Like when he speaks mm -hmm. to Agnes and Zara, he's like, you know, he pro pro properly like takes your hand and like <laughs> this weird yeah. dragon mouth like kisses the top <laughs> of it and it's like, yeah, it's very well, well, wonderful. You look radiant and like, oh, I love the the, the keep has such an energy about it. So, you know, very sort of, like, <laughs> well, thank you. We've uh, done our best. <laughs> yeah, it's very sort of yeah, very gentlemanly and things. Um, but I, yeah, I think as, that Agnes, like you know, she has this automatic like noble court mode, but it's mm -hmm. been so long that they've all been in like dirty adventurer mode that she kind of like <laughs> hasn't been that way in a while and it just light bulb switches on yeah yeah and it's definitely something that responds well i think that the atmosphere changes though like tarkle when tarkle enters like completely just like emotionally cold the the kind of atmosphere drops and even marilonis kind of like looks and he steps back to like the back wall of the room like kind of you kind of get the impression that he's used to like being an advisor who like watches and analyzes rather than is a big participant and he just mm. kind of steps back and like brings his clawed hands up to his chest and sort of just keeps an eye on everything um and then yeah kind of and again for the the for you guys like yeah willow's songs demeanor very changed much more kind of like her movements are very fluid and very graceful and almost not sultry but almost kind of very composed as she just sort of drifts like a wraith behind Tarkle. Um, and she sort of stands and takes a, a very soft pose. Uh, like she's trying, she's not trying as hard to look human anymore. She, it more that she's, tr she's definitely trying to, she's no longer timid. Right. Mm. And there is this confidence there. There is this kind of, arrogance right there is a, a touch of arrogance there and sort of superiority but also i would say that agnes would definitely pick up on it because you've got a decent sort of like wisdom right so and i think azara would definitely pick up on this as your political training and things like that she's not trying to appear threatening she's confident but it's not like i'm here to cause trouble or i'm here to make demands it's very gentle but very assured of herself um as opposed to this timid sort of woodsy nymph that you had met before who was like constantly clinging to tarkle and acting very scared and you know very sort of uh you know uh very put on um and she quick thing. sorry yeah quick retcon i realized i'm dumb azara does know what she is she would have told Meladonis that she's a dragon right okay yeah, sorry. I, was, it's, it's I just thought about that. You confused too. Like, you were yeah. just in a massive fight, right? Yeah. Like, so like, maybe it's like Zara, like, by the way, he's a, she's a dragon. Yeah, I feel like on the, on the walk there, she would have, yeah, like, it would have come yeah. up and been like, wait, no, duh, she's a dragon. I, well, we knew that. It does raise a question, though, because like, there's definitely like this magic that Tarko has. Like, he's made a pact. And right. He, you know, and there's been fey magic has been involved. You somehow think, or somehow yeah but, like there's there's definitely something odd going on right like uh, yeah she, you think that she is a dragon and i think she said that she was a dragon but then you're not sure where all this fey stuff kind of plays in so it makes sense yeah that zara would also be like 
you know, there's some fake connection here, but she is a dragon, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, she she kind of makes her way down. She casts her eyes over the room, uh, almost like taking in all the corners and sort of like checking uh, to see if there were any additional guards or things like that around you. But it, seeing as it's just the the group of you and and Meridonis, uh, she seems to sort of like take a, a step back. Um, I, I take missile- it that the town is well. You fended off the attack then. We did. Good. And as the town rests and recuperates, we must address the most pressing issue at hand, which is that the Baron of Evening Star is in danger due to a pact he has unknowingly entered. We are under the impression that you wish him no ill. And as such, we would like to discuss the dissolution of this connection. Interesting. That is certainly a discussion we can have, although even I am not fully aware of how to do so. I'm curious that you feel that that is your biggest concern. I should make it clear, that attack that you faced last night, that was a very, very small force. The assassins were meant to kill you before you had a chance to respond. That force was really a a token representation. There is a greater threat than your perceived belief that I am somehow uh, causing Tarkal harm or, or this pact is somehow wrong. The greater concern is that my mother, Shadowbriar, is, has her eyes set upon Evening Star and the four of you. But if you wish to discuss this bond that has been brokered, we can. I'm afraid even I do not know the full extent of its nature. I'm disinclined to take political advice from you, but Tarkal, do you feel like we should focus on other matters first? Uh, Tarkal kind of snapped to a little bit. Um, He's definitely kind of out of it, and... I I want to trust your judgment and Azara's. And he looks over at Clive snoring. And Clive. Yeah, I'm just did. <laughs> Clive. 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 Oh. It's a deep sleeper. You can't interrupt his Clive. Oh. Could you could you listen because you're from the Fey Wild and your insight could be invaluable, please? From like behind a couch, you just see a big lion hand thumbs up. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciated. Uh, I'll turn to Willow Song and say, "Am I to understand that you believe that the connection you have with Tarkal is not?" a factor in the danger we face from the Feywild? As long as I am safe, there is no immediate danger to Tarkal, no. Physically. And the Feywild, the Feywild, perhaps I'm not sure if you are fully clued up on, on the events that have formed around you. The Feywild is something of a misdirection. These problems between Cormir and the Feywild, it's engineered. It's one of the things my mother has been working on, one of the things that I was sent to help instigate. Do you wish to be free of it? Of the pact? No. Of, of whatever it is your mother is doing. My mother is hell-bent on revenge. It has consumed her for centuries. For a long time, all I wanted was to please her. I wanted to be her favorite. I wanted to bask in her glory and be recognized for the powerful creature that I am. But now I've seen that I will never achieve that, that my desires mean nothing to her. I think what I want now is to live my own life and to be free of the yoke that she has upon me. How would that be accomplished? Her death, 
primarily, but I could I could leave Cormir, I suppose. I could fly out there and find some corner of the world to make my lair and do things as I wish. But she does glance at Tarkal. I feel that I could be of great value to a fledgling kingdom. In the past, my kind and Cormir have had difficult relations, but I see now that the metallic dragons have entered into pacts with these great cities, all of whom are currently taken up. But Evening Star does not have such a benefactor. You would choose to be Evening Star's benefactor? If I was allowed to live my life as I wish, I, I have no interest. Many dragons hate humans. They hate elves. They hate dwarves and wish to seek them harm or they are focused more upon their, their selfish desires. I simply wish to be free and be with individuals whom company I appreciate. If I you... can do so and benefit Evening Star. Perhaps Evening Star could allow me to go about my desires as I wish. You said your mother was hell-bent on revenge. I was under the mm. impression she just wanted something with Evening Star. What is it that she wants revenge for? Not against Evening Star specifically. She wants revenge against Cormir as a whole. Long ago in your nation's past, the purple worm Thalmaglor attacked Cormir. It was once Thormaglor's uh, lair. It was his lands. And then the knights came and a great war was fought for many years, during which many dragons were killed. Many dragons. I know that my grandparents were among them. My mother was hunted, injured when she was very young, and she harbors great resentment against this nation for those injuries and for that uh, pain that she suffered. Then she why... still believes that this land belongs to dragons, not to people. Then of all the Cormirian places, why Evening Star, this out-of-the-way village? Ah. Uh, she she does not just focus on Evening Star. Initially, you were... Uh, your new appointment as the Baron and Baroness, your status as an advisor, this new kingdom that was being devised, the reason I was sent was to see if you could be manipulated, to see if you could be engineered, used as a way to spark the flames. And this is what you encountered with Davian Cormoril was part of that. Um, but she has her sights set on everywhere in Cormir, not just Evening Star. Evening Star is but one domino in her her game, one chess piece. Can I can I roll an insight check just to kind of feel if I'm getting any gut reaction from this that like she's sure. trying to manipulate us or she's actually telling us the truth? Absolutely, you can, hundred percent. I roll a seventeen. Seventeen. She, if she's lying to you, it's because she's very good. Um, very few body language ticks. Uh, she doesn't break eye contact when she's speaking. She keeps like quite a consistent eye contact. No irregularities in her breathing. She seems to be playing this pretty straight, as far as you can tell. Is there any reason why you should remain connected to my brother? I can I offer him can offer him great power. He's only just begun to he had only just begun to explore the powers that can be granted to him. There are a few other benefits, trinkets and the like that I could perhaps provide. My knowledge, my skills as a manipulator. And she says that word and she does glance like her eyes flick to Tarkle uh, as a diplomat. But the power, it, it is very much a matter of the more Tarkle 
connects with it, the the more it will grow. He's already a very skilled warrior and skilled scout, but more magical power could be his to command if he wished it. I have never known Tarkal to prioritize power. Yet you are nobles. He did accept this position of nobility. With positions of nobility comes power. It is the nature of all to seek something greater than themselves. I look to Azara at this point, because I feel like Agnes has been acting as kind of the like questioner, basically. Yeah. But she sees Azara as good the cop. like, <laughs> yeah. Well, and she sees, cop. <laughs> she sees Azara as like the person who actually knows anything about all of this. Sure. So, yeah. you know, she sees herself as just like the conduit. So she kind mm -hmm. of looks at Azara like, that's all the questions yeah. I have and says, uh, Magister, from your knowledge, your sources, your research, what course of action could we pursue in a situation like this to best benefit Evening Star? Azara takes a long pause and a deep sigh and looks at Willow Song and she says, once again, as much as this deeply, deeply pains me, Willow Song has a point. We should not be concerned with the pact when a supposedly ancient dragon wants to end us all. I think, and she turns over her shoulder and looks at Melodonus. As you, Melodonus, have been here listening to all of this, if your yeah, lady yeah. Arabelle would be so inclined, we should join forces and forces with as many in Evening Star as possible to combat said dragon. And I know that won't be a good look as Cormier has fought dragons in the past. And we are now trying to find friendships with said creatures. But if this is an act of war, we cannot sit idly by and let our towns be destroyed. I will do what I can, Magister, but Lady Braywinter does not have much political power in Arabelle. Uh, the Countess, uh, the, uh, uh, who in Celeste, uh, who invited you to your ball, is the main power within the city. Lady Braywinter will do what she can, and listening to this, although I am... <sighs> Does uh, I do not know whether you wish me to address this individual or not, but my concern is if they are a dragon, they are a manipulator of kinds. I mean, what proof do we have? What evidence do we have of that we could show these other lords and ladies that this threat is real? That is a good point. And then Azar will look to Willow Song. Other than you, who is currently bound in this form, what proof do we have of your mother coming to kill us all? You witness the Draconians, I take it. You saw that their bodies dissolve once they are defeated. This is very much my intention. How mother makes them, I don't know. What sorcery is used, but she purposely uses disposable assets. It's why she was... I think that the attack and the assassins to capture and kill me were it was a hasty decision mother is not used to doing things that she does not expect she is methodical she is patient and my actions spurred her to take a rather reckless stance but even then she is clever enough to use tools that will make it hard to prove her involvement she has been at work at this for many hundreds of years this is all culminating in something my betrayal is a thorn it is a a divergence from what she expects to happen i'm afraid i can't really say to any proof 
beyond myself. And as you rightly point out, sorceress, I am bound to this form, uh, even under magic, as your wizard companion here. I will appear to be a, 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 except for the greatest of magics, I will appear to be a, an elf. I will appear to be a, a humanoid creature. Um, two quick questions. Yes. Uh, doesn't Melodonus work with the Duchess of Marlier? No, he worked for Lady Braywinter, who is the one who employed you to go to Castle Braywinter. I could have sworn he was the creepy dude from the from Arabelle, was he not? He is Darn from it. Arabelle, but Arabelle has multiple nobles within it. Right. Um, and the Braywinter family is like a very minor right. house. God, why did I yeah. think he was uh, one of the war wizards? Damn it. Uh, you do, you mean, you know war wizards. I do like, know war you, wizards. You could definitely reach out to them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Mel Melodonus is, he's, he's like a mercenary wizard. He's like a freelance wizard. He's very gotcha. powerful, but he works for Lady Braywinter as like a, as a personal wizard, basically. Gotcha, um, gotcha. Yeah, that's fine. There's um, a lot of NPCs. There's so names. many NPCs, yeah. Yeah. Um... Agnes will kind of interject a question. Sure. As, this, as though this just occurs to her. Uh huh. If the problem is a grudge long held, is there a course of action we could pursue to change minds as opposed to rend <laughs> bodies? Even Azara laughs a little bit at that. <laughs> you are very sweet, Agnes Crown Silver. My mother is nearly a thousand years old. This grudge has fueled her heart. It has dug in it like a like a briar thorn, winding its way around her heart. You will find no diplomacy with Shadow Briar. None at all. It will be her death or Cormier's. You can try. By all means, sweet girl, you can try. But I would be very fearful for you if you did. I will say this. I do not believe that you need to worry about the immediate future, immediate in your lifetimes. Mother is, as I said, patient. The attack on Evening Star was uh, panicked. She will not attack Evening Star for some time. She may attack in the future. If she does, it will be with a far larger force. Uh, with the hope of destroying you and me. Uh, but she will it will take her time to maneuver that. She will focus on other targets before then. So there are you will have some time to decide things, build up your forces, forge alliances if you so wish. She points to Azara. I feel that you, Magister Azara, have the right of it. You will need strength. And you know I I feel that you understand the power of Diplomacy and the occasional bit of manipulation and deceit as well. They can be useful tools. Azara. For good or ill. Azara will look to Melodonus. No. Mm. In, in, in Azara's arcane knowledge, um, mm. like a, a spell to dispel a powerful transformation, mm -hmm. would she know or? like through multiple channels be able to access a mage that powerful if this dragon if this shadow briar is as ancient as she says and yeah. is also capable of doing things that like i mean you know you as mika have read the player's handbook right this isn't a normal ancient green dragon, no this right? is an old fucking scary ancient dragon. <laughs> this, is, this is like dragon who has access <laughs> to magic spells and stuff like that yeah, yeah, yeah. you suspect you will need old magic like probably nothing that a living spellcaster can cast, but like mm -hmm. maybe an art, like a an item kind. Of, mm. and, and in fact, actually, I think Azara would would start seeing that, like, you know, you don't think the dark light would work, mm -hmm. but the dark light was an item, like a powerful magic item created to break certain magic, right? Right. Something like that, and you your mind begins to kind of whirl, and I don't think you would know anything specific, but this is like. The, it's like a two two in one thing here. The bond between uh, Tarkle and Willow Song, mm -hmm. um, 
some sort of artifact or magic spell or effect that can sever magical ties mm -hmm. would maybe be able to break that right mm -hmm. and then dispelling the, the this almost sounds like you know the way that she's been bound to this form you would need something to break chains mm. of enchantment right so maybe something like that could work like some device or spell that can sever or break magical bonds would would work for that now yeah living spellcasters even the most powerful war wizards you know they can probably cast sort of seventh eighth level spells but even that like you can't think of anything that's going to necessarily you know work on an ancient green dragon's magic right um but that doesn't mean that there's not resources to find it. Like, you know, research, being able to, like, seek things out. There are also spellcasters beyond Cormier's borders that everybody has heard of that may be able to have that knowledge or power. Um, you know, figures like, you know, the legendary Elminster would have probably been able to do this and stuff like that, right? But I think knowing all of this, Azara would impart that in, in her way to the group um, and ask Melodonus... Uh, I'm sorry to have dragged you all this way for seemingly just a conversation. Um, no, you... Magister, please do not apologize. This is <laughs> not only fascinating, but it sounds like there is a grave danger to Cormier and to my lady and to uh, the places that I've come to care for. I am I'm most pleased to offer my assistance, however I can. Thank you. And I do ask of you this, if you will return to your lady and tell her what we know and Indeed. begin to work your connections and your angles to not only inform our fellow allies of the danger that may be posed to us, but seek out something that can break this yes. magical chain. Because once we do, we will have our proof in Dragon Song or in Willow Song's dragon form. Indeed, yes, I do believe that that may be a key. And also for young Baron Crown Silver, I believe, if you wish to be rid of this bond, you will need something of a similar ilk. But yes, I, I will put to work researching such matters. There are many ancient places in Faerun. There are many tombs and relic blades and magic spells that I'm sure there will be something. We must merely find it, uh, locate it, and then find it. And we will yes. do the same on our side. And in the meantime, and Azar will look to Willow Song. You offer your services as a manipulator, as a tracker, as a researcher. If we can put you to work. If you like. We can put you to work trying to solve your own problem. There's a smile where she she thinks she wants to say something, and then she doesn't, and she looks and says, like. I am more than happy to assist Evening Star. And indeed, it is my own problem. I will find a way, if I can find a way to dispel this enchantment upon myself, I will be of much greater use and I will be able to assist you. We it will... is in both of our interests to stop what my mother has planned. Absolutely. And I'm sure we will discuss your greater further use if and when we get to it. But for now, spy master of Evening Star, I guess I should refer to you as. I have certain skills in that area, yes. I will say this, Magister, as well. I know you do not trust me, but my offer of helping you understand your own past still stands. Being a dragon myself, the legends of Tythandrius and his destruction upon Cormier is something that I learned. You have great power within you. I offered Tarkle power. We brokered a deal for him to gain magic access. But with you, it is in your blood. There is much you could do. So much potential. Azara kind of turns away because that is one of her <laughs> favorite things to hear, but she doesn't want to... Acknowledge it, yeah. Acknowledge it, yeah. She's like really yeah. actively trying to turn a new leaf and be like good Azara, um, mm -hmm. and that kind of almost triggers old, diplomatic, power-hungry magister war wizard Azara, mm -hmm. and so she kind of, like, turns to, like, break that, break that spell, and mm -hmm. just says, your job is to seek out information, not to ply me with power. Feel free mm -hmm. to use the resources we have. 
I'll be in my tower. And she kind of just rushes off because she just like got really flustered. Sure. Uh, uh, yes, this uh, this meeting is adjourned. We will. <laughs> Uh, good covering. Good covering. <laughs> we we will uh, continue this conversation soon, <laughs> and then uh, I'll, I'll kind of uh, I'll peek over the couch at Clive and be like, uh, "Anything to add? Any uh, any knowledge of like you know Fey bonds? Do you have any magic items that could like sever Tarkal from Willow Song? Anything on you? Nothing." Make just just for my just for my sake, Nate. Yeah. Make a history check. God. Okay. Please. If Clive comes up with like the clincher, I'm gonna be so tickled. History. All right. Big big. Come on, plus Nate zero. twenty. Nate twenty. If it, uh, honestly, like a nice high roll here, we might get something. Four. Oh, <laughs> Darn. I don't even. I mean, it's up to you. Maybe you weren't like, yeah. Maybe you were asleep when a lot of it was like, you know, being discussed. But yeah, just doesn't. Nothing, nothing comes to mind. Maybe you were asleep, but you can't. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> All right. Meridonis will uh, sort of bow. Uh, he will come up to you, Agnes, and just say, "A Baroness, a most pleasure to be in your delightful company once more. Thank you for." Uh, your hospitality here in the evening star as uh, always good friend you're welcome anytime indeed. thank you thank you and to you my good baron as well uh and he'll come over and offer like a big scaly like a giant clawed scaly hand uh and he kind of offers it to you um as like yeah. a handshake kind of thing yeah he would i mean tarko would shake it he just kind of like throws his hand up and like pretty, pretty you put limp. your hand in his and like the claws like wrap round and they don't dig into your skin but like they're in these giant talons and he will just sort of like lean a little in hand and and just... yeah and he kind of just pulls you in and he's just like i understand the pain of a heartbreak things will get better in time he just pats you on the shoulder and then he sort of like leaps <laughs> it's just sort of like i am i know how it feels and then he will uh head off uh, and he just sort of waves behind him as he walks out into the uh, he walks out into like the keeps like courtyard, um, and he starts looking around. And he's like, "Are you there, soldier? Uh, can you bring me a big stick?" Uh, and then he gets a big stick and he starts drawing a teleportation circle in the nice. mud. And he's just like, "I think he's my new favorite character." And then he disappears. I love uh, him. I love him so much. Distinguished gentleman. Yes, yeah, so distinguished. <laughs> He's very distinguished. Look how he sits. Um, <laughs> it, it, I, I must emphasize how like scary this man is. <laughs> he has like an acid that like dribbles down his mouth. He's like wiping it and it burns at like a cloth. Like he probably goes through like a million handkerchiefs. But it, it like he looks <laughs> scary. Um, he's all like scarred and like got all these gross horns and stuff. And then he's just like the nicest dude. Um, <laughs> Looks can be it. deceiving. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, cool. Well, uh, yeah. So Azara kind of like rushes off. Uh, we, you know, Agnes kind of disbands everything. Tarkal, like, is there anything, you know, from Tarkal? Like, is he still like just trying to avoid, you know, everything? No, I think I think that Tarkal is just uh, he just has a little bit of a zombie day, so he's not. Uh, he's just gonna sit at the table. I think, like, he's yeah. just he's just gonna stay there for a little bit. Uh, okay. I assume. I mean. I mean. I don't know if Willow Song. Then, when Agnes says meeting adjourned, does Willow Song go to her room or? No. No. Yeah, she kind of. There. I think that for the first time, you kind of see where there's almost a bit of a hesitation, like a not quite sure what to do next. Like maybe that didn't go the way she thought it was going to, or maybe there was something a bit unexpected there. Um, but she sort of like seems to like spend some time just like looking around the room like she walks it she sort of looks at the crests and the decorations that you have here and things like that um if she sees you kind of like sitting there like not doing anything she probably leaves um and then a few moments later like nigel and aubrey come in and like they've got like hot tea and things like that um they sort of bring you some like food uh and things like that once um, once you... willow song leaves agnes would go sit next to charcoal sip the tea sure. and ask for the tea uh and and you know how do you feel about how that went and i know that 
it must be hard to be tethered to her while you're in so much pain and we can make that a priority but it sounds like it's going to take a while and i don't know how how do you feel i don't feel much i wouldn't i wouldn't describe myself as in pain but i i don't like the fact that she gets to stay here but i understand that she must if She's for no just... other reason than to keep her safe, which keeps you safe. Yeah. It's Agnes. just weird having a stranger live well, here. Well, I was going to say... But... Sorry. No, that's what I said. <laughs> Zoom. Annoying. Um, the only thing is, this, as you're having this conversation, Agnes, when you say that, like, out the corner of your eye, you can see, like, uh, Willow Song left this room, but she's, like, in the kitchen, and she's, like kind of like leaning against like a, a column and she's like like looking and listening like she you see her like in the shadows of the room just watching you and Tarkle. I meet um, her eyes and don't flinch. She doesn't flinch mm. either. I I But I Tarkle think... doesn't stay because he's like you Yes know, I, I figure he would just distracted. he would just keep spewing. Yeah yeah I, yeah I understand the priority even before that battle, when, when she warned us, the, the priority is her mother. But now she says her mother might not even be a threat in our lifetime. So what do we fight for? Do we fight for the far future? Do we, we just continue building Evening Star? What, what, what's the plan now? As far as I'm concerned, you're part of Evening Star. In fact, you're a big part of Evening Star. And my priority right now is making sure you're safe. And that just doesn't just mean physically, that means mentally and emotionally. And if her being here is causing harm, we'll find somewhere else. Right. I, like, like I said, if, I, I will tell you then when I'm in pain, it's just more it's more I have to get used to this, the way this relationship works. She talked a lot about power. Is that what you want? I had, I mean, the way, the way the power was granted was that I would protect her, that I would protect a now, a person that is already dead, a person that wasn't real. So I, I don't even understand how that holds up. I don't have to protect her. That person is, is gone, but obviously this pact. And Tarko will hold up his hand and, like, for the first time in a while, like, just make the green appear if he can. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, like, this should not even exist. And he'll snuff it out. But it's not, it's not the priority. I do agree with Willow's song when she said the priority is her mother, but then that her mother might not attack. I think just letting other kingdoms know about the attack that just happened, as Azara said she wanted to, and just so that they're safe as well. If the whole land of Cormir is in Shadowbriar's sights, then no kingdom is safe. And at the least, we give a warning if they choose not to believe us, so be it. I'll be fine. Well... You can't solve everything right now, but do you want to, like, go smash stuff? Yeah, I think... Could we could we go somewhere and maybe do the daggers and the fire circles again? Yeah. That sounds fun. I think we'll go, like, off to some rock pit somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Just cool. a couple of kids. They're all yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you definitely, I mean, Agnes, you would, like, the whole time, up until you kind of leave the key, like, as you're in that main chamber, like, Willow Song's just listening and watching, and then when you go, she's not, she goes. Like, once you go to, like, get your gear, or you go to leave the keep, you don't see her again. She just vanishes. Um, but yeah, you guys, uh, kind of spend the evening, uh, spend the day or afternoon, I guess, at this point, throwing fire circles and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah immediate uh no immediate danger it seems uh some some avenues of investigation to pursue uh, but i think there unless there is anything else uh, i think that's pretty much a good 
good place to end it uh because it sounds like uh more of a you know gotta figure out what we want to do next mm-hmm. yeah Ooh, i ooh, willow song oh those ooh. dang dragons being ooh. sneaky and evil dragon what i don't understand is like why couldn't willow songs be like yo you guys don't have a benefactor you guys don't look at me rar i'm a dragon what's up i could totally be your benefactor because when oh, you spend right. a few, no, when you, you spend a few hundred you. years being a manipulator uh it doesn't just go out the window unfortunately yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. you know what is it nature versus uh uh nature versus environment kind of thing you know mm-hmm. that kind of stuff nurture um, versus yeah nurture versus environment so her mommy made her a little minx yeah, yeah. 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 green dragon's gonna green dragon but uh <laughs> you know alignments can change um but we'll see we'll see what happens uh, maybe maybe Willow Song has a new best friend, and that best friend's name is Azara. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, you want, you want power, do you? Oh, Uh-oh. interesting. Oh, uh, you I, hit a Chilaris trigger. I literally want that to happen because I would love it if, like, the whole first like two seasons, three seasons, is Azara like Willow Song bad, Tarko. <laughs> Willow Song bad, and then Azara's just like in a corner sipping tea with Willow Song. I know. <laughs> You know, song she, not so bad. She hated Willow Song when she was this fake little oo woo girl. But then the True. second she was like, "I don't give a fuck. You want some power, bitch?" As I was like, "Oh shit, respect." Well, here's, <laughs> here's the thing, though. It's like I feel like the, it's that classic thing of like the reason that Azara kind of really hated Willow Song because she knew that she was being mani- manipulative and she knew that she was lying. Exactly. But she also. That's but that's also like Azara knows that that's how you get stuff. Like like there's almost this kind of like because Azara is like being Injured like spirit. oh my lord like she's done that stuff as well like you know because it's like that that's you know that's a way to get power. So it's like they they're very similar in some ways Azara and Willow's song. But uh, Azara was but, mostly mad that like she saw her moves working on somebody else, and then mm-hmm. when she was like I do that, listen to me. The person who's getting tricked was like she's not tricking me. And she's like no, you dumb bitch. I know this for a fact. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's that really frustrating thing of like, I know it's bad because I that's me. That's <laughs> I, I do I, that. Yeah. I'm a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, cool stuff. Thanks, everybody. We're going to probably call it there. Sweet. Yeah. You want to do shout outs? Yeah, let's do some shout outs. Also, start... uh, in between episodes, do you just give me a heads up of like, do you guys want to do anything next week? Like, do people want to do, like, go explore Silvermine? Do people want to go explore a magic flying tower? Out of game, I will tell you, the, like, the whole thing that when, when Willow Song said that, like, you're not in any immediate danger from the, her mother attacking you, you guys have got, like, a good chunk of gameplay where, like, if we want to do other stuff, you don't have to be like, oh, but what if, like, we get attacked again? Or, like, what if, you know, Evil Dragon becomes a th- big thing? Like, you guys <laughs> can go and do other stuff without any issues. So just have a think about any other stuff you want to do. Let me know in our little private chat and then I will I will prep for that. Um, but yeah, let's uh, I will start off with the shout outs. Uh, hi, I'm Mark. You can check me out on at Sherlock underscore Humes on Twitter. It's pretty much where I am on most places on the internet. Uh, I do a D&D show called High Rollers D&D alongside this one. You can check that out on Sundays, 5 p.m. GMT or 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, that's pretty much my whole jam. I'm a tag Mr. Nate Sharp. Hello. I uh, don't have too much going on. I'm streaming Monday, Wednesday, Fridays on twitch.tv slash Nate wants to BTL. And if I have something else going on that I'm totally forgetting, so I'm going to tag Shady. Hi, I'm Shady with a penguin at the end of that. You can find me at twitter.com slash Shady with a penguin at the end of that. Also, tomorrow, most likely, there's going to be a little shiny race between me and Mr. Battle on Twitch. Oh, so, yeah. So come on through. Ooh. It'll be a nice little squad stream. You can go to Nate Wants to BTL or Shady Penguin to catch us both. Uh, and it should be fun because one of us will get a lot of shinies and the other one will get 50 subs. So it'll be good. Heck <laughs> yeah. Uh, I tag I tag Mika. Uh, hi, I'm Mika Burton. You can find me most everywhere at Mika Burton. Um, the only thing that I can legally talk about right now is the fact that I, <laughs> over on the Critical Role uh, Twitch and YouTube, am doing some Legend of Vox Machina Q&As. Um, sometimes we do them live on Tuesday nights. Yes, at 7 p.m. <laughs> Pacific time. <laughs> and then when they're it's done... Like, 
I think it might have the power to be in two places at once. In two places at once. Ooh, spooky. Um, and then the VODs of the Q&A are put up on Twitter Rolls YouTube afterwards. You should watch them. They're really fun and chaotic. And it's just me hoarding and hurting a bunch of drunken kittens. It's a disaster. I tag Anna. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anna. You can find me at Anna Prosser and at AnnaProsser.com. If you need a host for any of your event needs or a producer for any of your show needs, let me know through my website. You can do that. Uh, I don't need a shiny race because I already have my shiny Eevee, shiny Gyarados, and shiny Rapidash. So <laughs> don't be too jealous. But you I'm can jealous. find me streaming on my channel at uh, slash Anna Prosser on Twitch where I stream Pokemon. And also on Wednesdays, I've been doing a show called Cup Dates, which is just a sit and chit chat show, which has a lot of heart and calm chaos. Uh, yeah, come see me. That's I'm the last person. I You're tag you, person. viewer. Be proud of yourself. <laughs> you. you. Uh, Mika did remind me of one thing which I forgot to mention about. Um, uh, in the coming weeks, keep an eye on my Twitter for it because I'm going to be properly promoting it there. I am going to be doing a cool uh, Vox Market and Watch Party thing for the UK. Mika's doing it, like, it with the, all the crew, but we're getting to do a fun thing where there's going to be like a crazy, uh, very uh, almost like escape room crystal maze thing that we're going to be doing with that for the for the finale. So that's oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a whole thing. But uh, yeah, keep an eye on my Twitter for that. That's like an upcoming exciting thing. If you're a big fan of, of Vox Marker and uh, the show, the animated show, come check that out. So that's it. Uh, thanks very much, everybody. Um, we will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.